This is Doug Varnberg and welcome back to another set of trips and tricks and today we're going to talk about a little bit about square bills. If you know me, I'm a square bill aficionado. I mean, if I had one bait to throw, I'd throw a square bill because I just, I'm fascinated with the way fish bite it. I understand where to throw it, how to throw it. I love fishing shallow all year long and the square bill is the perfect fit for me. Uh, I love cranking. I like being fast. I think I had ADD probably when I was a kid because I got to be doing something. Uh, but there's a lot of differences in square bills. I throw uh, Lucky Craft is a square bill that I throw a lot of. Uh, they build a the LC series and they build some extra variations um, that that do work too in the square bill situation. Uh, if you look. I have a wide variety of different types of square bills, different sizes, different colors. And one of the first things you start out is, is size wise. Um, I basically got three series here that I'm going to talk about. One is our BDS series, uh, Big Daddy Strike. And then we have the LC series. And then we're going to get into the SKT models uh, a little bit, what I'm going to call the specialty baits. Uh, there's, these are my these are my bread and butter baits. Um, probably if I was going to pick one, the 2.0 uh, it would be probably the bait that I would throw all the time. Um, they they have a wide variety. You've got one knockers. You've got rattling baits. You've got uh, silent baits. Um, so you've got a wide variety of conditions based on what you're fishing. Uh, but what you what I want to explain to you is start out my favorite thing is to start out small I probably throw a 1.5 2.0 uh, majority of the time when I'm tournament fishing trying to catch uh, numbers I'm going to try to get that limit first and once I get that limit then I'm going to typically go bigger baits one of the other situations where I would go smaller like the zero, the, the BDS zero, the BDS one uh, would be highly pressured water, clear waters. The fish are the fish are hitting on little minnows like uh, bank minnows. Uh, if you see these little minnows running around by the docks, that type of stuff, that's where the smaller baits really come in key. Sometimes that little tiny bait will catch a pretty dang good sized fish. Uh, for example, I remember at Texoma, I was throwing a 2.0 down there. Uh, caught a 7.4 on a 2.0. Uh, I fished a lot of that tournament throwing the, the 1.2 and caught a lot of a lot of big fish on it. Uh, it's a great little bait and it catches big fish. But what you're doing is you're trying, what I'm going to do is separate these baits, basically limit baits first, big fish next. Uh, the smaller baits will help you catch numbers, it'll help you catch smaller fish, uh, it'll help you get that limit in the boat. Then when you get that limit, then I start going to my bigger baits, my BDS-3, my BDS-4, uh, my LC Series 4, 4.5, 3.5, and then when you want to go to Giants, check out the SKT uh, Series. We've got two square bills in this line. Uh, this one is the uh, SKT Mag MR, it's a medium runner, it, it'll run down to 14 foot on 20 pound test. Uh, we also build another one that goes in the 4 to 6 range. Big baits will help you catch some big fish. Uh, if you look at that bait, it's not different than, than some of the, the brim and bluegill that you see swimming around in the lake. So those big fish, they'll, they'll eat them one big meal a day maybe. Uh, that's where this bait really comes in is helping you catch that is upgrade that limit and catch more fish. Sometimes the bigger bait will help you catch even the limits of fish. For example, in dirty water, I like throwing a bigger bait because it displaces more water uh, than a smaller bait. A lot of times, smaller baits work really good in really clear lakes like Table Rock. I've caught fish in the heat of the summer and in gin clear water on square bills close to the bank. Uh, I've caught them here on Truman. Uh, dirtier water, muddy environment, catching them on the bigger bait. The last thing you need to know about square bills is colors. 
you look at this and you say, man, where would you start? I basically break it down into an easy system that I use. Shad, brim, dirty water, and crawfish. Four colors will cover the four variety, uh, varieties of square bills that you need. Um, shad imitations, you can go the chartreuse shad, there's Tennessee shad, T.O. shad, um, green copper shad, those are all uh, clean water style baits. The next you're going to get into your brim baits, that's a brim bait, that's red eye, um, your chartreuses will get into the brims, there's a T.O. T.O. gill, um, that one's going to go over here in my, in my shag colors. This is kind of a wild color. This is a good dirty water color. Um, your chartreuse is in stain to, to a little dirty. But one that you may not really think about in dirty water is the Tennessee Shad. The Tennessee Shad, black and white, are probably the two best colors for dirty water. Solid black, solid white. Uh, that bait there offers both of them. You want a bright, bright white like the, TO Shad, like the Tennessee Shad there has. So I'm going to pull it back into my dirty water. It would be a good bait to add to your system because it's shad color and dirty water. The last color that uh, is going to be our crawfish colors. There's a green craw. Here's a red craw. Would be colors in my crawfish arsenal. There's another ver variation of green craw. So basically, if you look at the system, I'm going to just throw another good dirty water color. Crawfish, very good in the spring. 42 to 50 degree water, and crawfish start coming out. That is a hot bait. Fishing grass, you can rip that bait out of there. Fishing around rock, you're going to get a lot of crawfish in those situations. Shad's going to be my next key area. Shad is probably a pr predominant bait pre-spawn, through the spawn, and the post-spawn. In the, in the big spawn, dirty water, uh, bass hate brim chasing around the bed. One thing you can do is slow down your retrieve and really make these baits go womp womp. They're just going to wobble. And that drives a fish crazy. And a lot of times if you can make that one cast down there first and that fish just real slow, fish is going to attack that brim and try to get them away from the bed. The last situation that we'll talk about is dirty water. Dirty water, I like to throw typically a bigger profile, get that water displaced. Um, one knocker or rattling baits typically work better in dirty water. Uh, the fish can hear the sound. If it's highly pressured, you may go to a silent bait. I mean, there's always exceptions to the basic rules of fishing. Uh, if we knew all the, knew what the fish wanted, it would be a lot easier. But these baits, if you can group them in, buy you a shad, buy you a brim, buy you a crawfish, buy you a dirty bait. Buy you a, a, a variety of sizes. You know, where Tennessee shad works good in dirty and clear water, buy you a small bait and a large bait. It's going to help you select those baits more one at a time, two at a time, uh, and build up your build up your selection of square bills. This bait is an effective tool to fish it fast, fish it slow, fish it mid range, um, fish in rock, fish in wood, fish in open water. Um, these baits will cover that whole array. Uh, top water in the summer. A lot of times you see fish on the top, you can't get bit on them. Throw your square bill on. A lot of times that fish will eat underneath the surface and come up all the way to the surface. Excellent tool. When those fish are schooling is a square bill crankbait. Uh, they work great on bass. I've caught a ton of white bass on them. Uh, I've caught crappie. I've caught just about every species is hit this. I mean, they're not just for bass fish. Got young kids. Get them some of these smaller baits. They're excellent baits to take a kid out fishing, fishing, fishing small conservation lakes, farm ponds, that type of stuff. Even the major reservoirs, they're going to catch a lot more fish, get entertained, it gives them something to do. If they can cast and reel it back in, they can catch fish with a Lucky Craft Squirrel. I hope that it helped you learn a little bit about 
square bill fishing, um, how to narrow down the color choices to help you get started. Um, there's a lot of people that says that bait's too high, but one of the things with the Lucky Craft, you can pretty much pull it out of the package and throw it. Most of these baits, I've got factory hooks on them still. They're a very premium hook. Uh, they run true out of the package. That's one of the things with the Lucky Craft. You're going to get a really good bait for one price. You're not going to have to buy three or four baits uh, to find one that, that, that runs. So get you a Lucky Craft, get the original plastic square bill, and get out there and catch you some fish this year. And thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks. And tune in next time as we go more in depth about these awesome products that I'm able to represent. Thank you and good catching.